Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lisa. I'm an Australian expat living in Amsterdam with my husband. I have made quite a few videos now on this channel about what I think you should do if you move to the Netherlands. But today I thought I would do a 180 and make a video about all the mistakes that I feel I made when I moved to the Netherlands. Take this video with a grain of salt. Of course, this is based on my own personal experience um, and I may have a different personality to you, but hopefully at the very least, this video gives you some food for thought if you are thinking of moving to the Netherlands or if you're about to come here yourself. So let's get started. The very first thing that I would definitely do differently is to not move here during winter. Technically, my husband and I moved here during autumn, but when you come from a warm country like Australia, autumn is pretty much the same as winter. Um, it's still just as cold for us. The weather in the Netherlands during winter is gray. It's very dark. It's cold. It rains all the time. One of the most important things that can help you feel settled into your new home is to get to know the city and to walk on the streets and meet new people. You don't feel compelled to do any of those things when the weather is bad. And on the topic of meeting new people, I also personally found it quite difficult to meet new people during the winter season. Of course, this could be because we moved during the lockdown period, so we couldn't really meet up with people at coffee shops. Oh, sorry, I should say cafes. Never say coffee shop in the Netherlands. That means something different. Google that if you don't know what I mean. But I do also feel like because it's so cold and so rainy outdoors, people generally do seem to want to stay indoors and spend that season with their close friends and family. And of course, if you're a new expat, then it can be very difficult to break into that pre-existing social circle. The other reason why we also found it a little bit difficult when we first moved here was that we were here um, alone for Christmas and New Year's. So of course those days are typically days that you would spend with your family, with your close friends, and when you spend it alone in a completely foreign country where you don't know anybody, it can be a little bit isolating. I'm an introvert and I would say that yes, it was a little bit lonely last year because my husband and I didn't know anyone and we just spent those two days on our own. If you know those days are special to you and you really have to move here during winter for whatever reason, then I would really encourage you to try and come after December. If I could do it all over again, I would probably move here during spring or even during the summertime. The country completely changes during those seasons. It just completely comes back to life. You've got the sun, so you're getting vitamin D, which means you're going to be feeling a lot happier. Um, there's going to be leaves on the trees. The sky is going to be blue. There's going to be petals on the flowers. It was just like a nice time to come to the country and you're going to get the best first impression of the Netherlands if you come during those seasons. The days are longer so you can get more done, you feel more compelled to leave the house and explore your neighborhood, explore the city, go traveling. It's just such a lovely period. Having gone through now um, our very first spring and summer in Amsterdam, I would say that it just makes winter all the more bearable because you know what is around the corner. You know what to look forward to after winter is over. The second mistake that I made when I moved to the Netherlands is that I didn't try to get a job before I moved here in order to qualify for the 30% ruling. But for those who don't know, the 30% ruling is a tax exemption for highly skilled migrants or employees who are hired from abroad to work in the Netherlands and under this tax exemption, the employer will pay 30% of your salary as a tax-free allowance. Essentially, this tax allowance is a compensation for all the additional expenses that you are likely to incur as an expat who is moving abroad and having to start from the beginning again. The main conditions of the 30% ruling are that A, you have to be recruited from abroad and B, you can't have resided within 150 kilometers kilometers of the Dutch border. I guess if I really had to come up with a reason for why I did not try hard enough to get a job from abroad, it's just that our move to the Netherlands kind of happened a little bit quickly. But knowing how much of a financial impact 
the 30% ruling can have on your overall income, it makes me just wish that I prioritize that a little bit more. The 30% ruling, that's a long-term benefit that lasts for five years. Because I now have already come to the Netherlands, I will never be able to qualify for the 30% ruling. So it's an irreversible mistake or regret. So my tip for you would be that if you are planning to come to the Netherlands, then try to start your job search early, try to get hired from abroad, especially if you um, are already working in a very highly skilled or highly sought after sector like engineering or software engineering in tech, product management, marketing, finance, law, all those very kind of highly skilled sectors because you'll most likely be eligible for it. Also, if you are more of a visual person and you want to see how much the 30% ruling will influence or positively impact your overall income, I would recommend that you go to the website thetax.nl and on that website, you can check a box on the side that says 30% ruling and that will give you an idea of how much additional income that you will receive in hand if you qualify for the 30% ruling. That kind of really drives my point here. The third mistake that I made was that I brought way too many summery clothes than I needed to. The average temperature in summer in the Netherlands is between 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, which is not warm at all, at least by my standards. And I already thought that I was being quite sensible with the clothes that I packed because I knew that it wouldn't be as hot as in Australia. But I fully expected that I would have the opportunity to wear all the beautiful dresses and skirts that I brought over. They were so colorful and summery and I barely wore any of them. I was still wearing my jeans. I was still wearing sweaters. I occasionally would break out in a t-shirt and shorts, but almost always by nighttime, I would have to put a jacket on. In the Netherlands, it's quite windy, which I think is what also makes it a little bit cooler than it should be or than that you think it would be. The Netherlands is a super windy country because it's right next to the sea and also because it's one of the flattest countries in the world. So there are literally no obstacles for the wind. You want to be wearing things that you can easily take off and put back on uh, with ease. So I'm thinking jackets, sweaters, only bring your pants. I barely wore shorts. Since we are on the topic of clothes, I think we should also talk about your shoes. And that was another mistake that I made. I would advise you to think very carefully about the shoes that you bring to the Netherlands. Firstly, let's talk about heels. No one wears heels here. So unless you know for a fact that you need them for work, you need them for a specific special occasion, leave the heels behind. What shoes do people here actually wear? White sneakers or trainers, Doc Martens, and also those military style ankle boots. I'll put a picture here so that you understand what I mean. Um, and the reason for this, I think, is because A, the Dutch cobblestone streets, you've got to wear a shoe with a good sole so that it doesn't hurt your foot. Um, it rains a lot, so you've got to wear a shoe that is going to be waterproof and not get damaged by the rain. And also, people here bike a lot, so you need to wear a shoe that is going to be comfortable to bike in. What I'm saying is that you shouldn't bring any kind of shoe that can't handle the rain or that you wouldn't feel comfortable biking in. So I'm talking, at least on the rain front, I'm talking about suede shoes, shoes with lots of holes in them, uh, leather shoes, cloth-based shoes like those Tom's shoes or even Converse shoes I feel are pretty useless here. Let me go get some shoes so I can show you what I brought and what I don't wear and what I would not recommend you bring yourself. So hold on one minute. A few moments later. Um, so the first shoe I'm going to show you is um, a clog. I love these shoes. I used to wear these all the time in Australia and you, as you can tell they are a little bit battered and loved but I never wear these. For all the reasons that I just stated earlier, there's a heel, it's not comfortable to walk in on the streets here, not comfortable to bike in, certainly not waterproof, this is not leather, um, your feet are exposed if it rains, just not practical. I've also got these shoes which I used to wear during the summer, I love these shoes as well, but look at this, 
holes everywhere at the front. So what's gonna happen if it rains? I have only worn these maybe two or three times during the summer on clear, warm days, and that was it. The mistakes just keep rolling in. So uh, this is a ballet flash. Um, I think it's pretty obvious why I don't wear this. It's cloth based, hopeless in the rain. It is flat, so it would be somewhat comfortable to wear on the street, but I cannot bike in these shoes. You want something that is a little bit more sturdy when you're biking, and these are definitely not sturdy. So I have never worn these since arriving here. Some sandals. You do see people wearing these from time to time, but look how thin the sole is. You're going to feel every single stone on the street if you wore these shoes. And one more shoe. So this is kind of a military style ankle boot, you could say. But while these look very much the part here, they are not as functional as they may seem. Because I bought this in LA, these boots are not made for cold weather. It's very, very thin. There's no insulation. Now I just don't wear these during winter at all. So you might be asking, what do I wear? Well, I really only wear two shoes now. The first pair of shoes that I wear are my Nike Air Force Ones. I only got them very recently because I saw everyone wear them. I liked the look of them. And if everyone is wearing them, then there's probably a good reason for that, right? Um, and yeah, they're very, very comfortable. They hold up really well in rain. They are warm, they look nice, they're casual, they go well with every outfit. The second pair of shoes that I recently also purchased and that I plan to just wear for the rest of my time in the Netherlands are my Doc Martin Chelsea boots. Here they are. <laughs> um, I know Doc Martens isn't really everyone's style, but I purposely chose this style because it's a little bit more mature. Um, you can't immediately tell that these are Doc Martens because the stitching around the sole is not the signature Doc Martin yellow stitching. Um, but I really like these shoes because you can see the sole is thick, so it's really sturdy. It's waterproof as all Doc Martens shoes are. It's got this faux fur lining, so it actually keeps your foot really, really, really warm. So maybe some of the shoes I shared with you aren't really quite your style. What I would recommend is that if you still want to get a better idea of how Dutch people dress here, check out the Instagram account Amsterdamers in Amsterdam. I would say that the Amsterdamers in Amsterdam account is a very accurate portrayal of the kinds of outfits that you commonly see people wear here. And the final thing that I wish we did a little bit differently or that I think we could have done differently was to at least consider living in other cities in the Netherlands, not just Amsterdam. So my husband and I, we honestly never even considered living in any other city other than Amsterdam. Firstly, because we are your typical city folk. Uh, we are both originally from Sydney and actually Gustavo is originally from Rio de Janeiro, which is the second largest city in Brazil. The other reason why we thought Amsterdam would be the best place for us to live in was because my husband's job was going to be based in Amsterdam. So of course we thought, well, we want to live near the office. In case you haven't noticed, I am Asian. Um, and of course, diversity is really, really important to me. So in my mind, the bigger the city, the more diverse it is and the more comfortable I'm probably going to feel. Do I still agree with the choice that we made? It's really hard to say because we don't know what life would have been like if we lived in another city. But one thing I can tell you is that it is a lot more convenient than I initially thought to commute from Amsterdam to other nearby cities like Utrecht, like Den Haag, Leiden, Harlem. The public transport system here is actually really, really good. And to many of those cities I mentioned, you can take a direct train. Um, to Utrecht, for example, it's less than an hour train ride away. Most employers will pay for your transportation costs to and from the office. Unsurprisingly, even though my office is based in Amsterdam, 
many of my colleagues, especially the Dutch colleagues, they don't live in Amsterdam. They live in other neighboring cities and they either drive or they take the train there. And my workplace covers all those transportation costs for them. Living in Amsterdam also may not save you that much time in your commute. So for me personally, it takes me about 45 minutes door to door from my home to my office. And I recently learned that my colleague who lives in another neighboring city, it takes her about the same time to drive home. She lives much further away where she probably has quite a big house and she's probably paying like half the rent that we're paying here in Amsterdam. At the end of the day, choosing where you live is a very personal decision. It depends a lot on your needs. It depends a lot on your personality, what your day-to-day -day life is like. Um, Amsterdam is a really awesome city. I really do love the area that we live in. I love how diverse it is. I love how expat friendly it is. But I also totally understand why a lot of Dutch people don't recommend living in Amsterdam or they don't want to live in Amsterdam. Yes, it is expensive. Uh, yes, there are lots of tourists. Yes, there are lots of expats like myself. Um, so yeah, you kind of have to just weigh up the pros and cons. The main point that I'm trying to make here is that even if you do get a job in Amsterdam, it's not impossible to live in a different city and commute to Amsterdam every day. It's very doable. And if your employer is willing to cover the transportation costs, then it literally isn't going to cost you any extra money to live in a different city. It might even save you money because the rent will probably be much lower. That's it. Those are the five things that I wish I did a little bit differently when I moved to the Netherlands. You live and you learn. When you make such a big decision like relocating abroad, you're bound to make some mistakes or have some regrets and wish that you did certain things differently. But I guess that's what I'm here for. I'm here to tell you about the things that I learned so that you can avoid making some of the same mistakes that I made. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It just helps my channel grow and make sure you hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already done so and including the notification bell too because that way you will be alerted whenever I make a new video. The other question I'd like to ask you guys is to let me know in the comments down below what particular topics you would like me to talk about or make new videos about in 2022 because it's a brand new year. I'm really excited to make new videos and new content for you guys and I'm sure with the new year there are going to be a a lot more people who are thinking of relocating to the Netherlands. So let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to take it under consideration. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you in the next one.